Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn, the Hormone Whisperer, and welcome to our Saturday morning quick tip. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm very excited for what we have to cover today. It's a beautiful day here in, uh, uh, Brandon, what day is it? It's the 26th of May. Yep. Yes, uh, me and Brandon are in studio for you guys. Uh, obviously, you've been watching for a while. You know my nephew, Brandon, is here with me on a usual regular basis on Saturday mornings. We're getting ready for uh, some nice weather here in Green Bay. And uh, it's kind of cool because what happens is we, as you live up north in the Green Bay area, you know, people start to actually do more eating out and cooking out. And one of the biggest things that people talk about is the meat products. Okay, so we're going to go over. This is probably one of the biggest questions I get if people ever um, stop me on the street. It even happened yesterday. I went down to uh, one of my favorite places with Rebecca Brown at Happy Belly's and stopped there and got some gluten-free, you know, things for my staff here. And it was kind of cool. And literally, I was walking out, and uh, um, someone stopped me and said, hey, you're the Wellness Way guy. I watch your videos all the time. And she asked me something very specific, and I thought it was kind of cute that we have this topic today. She goes, you know, Doc, uh, where do I start with health stuff? I got Hashimoto's really bad. Well, that's the one thing that I want to do. So a lot of the, our next series are going to be kind of where do we get started on certain things, okay? And I think one of the biggest things that you look at what people should really start with is their meats. Because if you look at what most people do is when they look at a meal, there's some meat source there. Um, so I want to start with the beef because, once again, beef is one of the most sold meat products that we do that way. And there is some confusion on it. Man, I just wish that everything was actually produced and everything the same, we wouldn't have to have a discussion going to differences of it and all the labels that way. But remember, meat products have been so, um, let's say, manipulated over the last, you know, 50 years. And, and what's the purpose, okay? That's the big thing. Why is there such major distinction between all of the beef products or any food product out there? Guys, it still comes down to profit, okay? That's the biggest thing. You know, it's really funny. Over the last 75 years, food became more about its speed than its quality. If, if food was always based on its quality, I wouldn't even have to do, uh, you know, quick tips and discussions like this. Because if food was based on its quality, how it was raised and what was done would be key to everything in that way. So I think this is probably the biggest discussion we have to have when where you start. Because once again, meat products have been so manipulated over the years. And I'm going to kind of go through that a little bit that way. Plus, for example, it's how an animal is actually treated. Okay, that's a big thing. Now, once again... Uh, people say, Doc, are, are you a meat eater? Yeah, my, my girls, my wife, I, we eat meat that way. Um, you know, obviously, we, we try to dominate in a plant-based diet that way because we do love, you know, the, we do love our, our, our stuff that we want to do as far as health-wise that way. Um, and once again, people always say, and this is one thing that people come back to, um, there's some arguments about meat and things like that. That's not a discussion today. But the idea is no matter if you eat meat or not, you want to have the highest quality version of all things that way. That's the, even the difference between organic and non-organic vegetables that way. So that's why some of these discussions, for example, in quality are so important that way. So, and, and actually is how it's treated that way. So let's start here. Now, if you see the topic today, I said, listen, grass-fed versus organic beef. Well, that's actually just the start of discussion because there's so many variations between even grass-fed or, or organic itself that way. So let's kind of get into this. But before we do, let's say hi, Brandon, to the people that have jumped on. Oh my goodness, I always, I'm always you know, just so thankful that so many people jump on this early in the morning. Um, and thanks for, for always tuning in there. Uh, good morning, you know, Tabitha, good morning. Hey, Brandon, good morning. Brandon tapped in there. Good morning, Heather, nice to see you this morning. Uh, Jenny. Guy Wolf, oh my goodness, hello Guy, nice to see you again. Dr. Ryan Miller, Kim, nice to see you. Audrey, Brenda, Angela, the guys, thank you so much for, Jamie, thank you uh, for popping in this morning. So let's hit on this very good, nice topic of grass-fed versus organic beef this way. So here we go, is there a big difference? Well, yes, there is, okay? And there's many symbols and pictures and things differentiate between, actually even the quality of meat itself that way, how it's fed and what it does that way, it's actually pretty distinct between all of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through some of the distinctions, you know, what are the kind of the differences that way, and at the end, I'm gonna give you the choices that I do. Because as you guys know, you see it on Facebook, you see it on our Instagram page, you see that I get to travel a lot. Well, that's the big key. See, when you're at home, you can actually really actually control every aspect of what's in your household that way. When you go out to eat that way, well, guess what? You're, you're, you're victim to what is actually there on the menu that way. Okay, so we're going to be able to actually give you some terminology and some understanding, for example, of what we can do. 
All right. So as you can see, I mean, it's kind of funny. You can see a conventional food lot for cows is huge. That is actually a true picture of a conventional meat uh, plant. Okay. Now that's the thing. See what happens is because of cost variation, you know, conventional farms, you know, those big farms that are trying to produce it really don't care about the quality that way. That's why all these labels have become on there and certifying everything. Because once again, um, if you look at these farms today, it's quite scary what they do. They don't even get to actually even have any grass or anything. They're basically walking around on mud and they're fed, they're fed a lot of processed stuff, including other animal parts. And that's why all these distinctions between grass fed and organic, all the things have come up that way. But then you can actually see this happy cow. He's out in the pasture, he's out grazing that way. Obviously there is a difference between meat. You know, that's one thing. See, one thing I love about the internet, all these things can be, you know, with, with just a little bit of research can actually be very distinctly shown the difference. If you look at a, just in general, a cow that's fed corn compared to a cow that's out in the pasture eating grass, even its meat's very different. Actually, the quality of the meat is very different. So let's start here. Let's start with grass fed versus 100% grass fed. Now, so, so let's start just the basic conventional meat, all right? Obviously, I'm, gonna, I'm going to ask most people, stay away from basic conventional meat, okay? If there is a burger, you know, that you eat on a regular basis that way, and it doesn't do anything more than just conventional meat, there's so many b things that are wrong with it, it's kind of scary, okay? There's a laundry list. It's almost like the worst food you could possibly eat because it's so inflammatory that way. So that's why conventional meat, for example, has now become, you know, a very big concern when it comes to heart disease and other conditions that way because it's so inflammatory. So that's why what they've started to do now is they start to label grass fed. You'll see that at the grocery store. I was actually at Woodman's. Thank you, Woodman's, for letting us come in. We really appreciate it that way. And you look at the major selection on the meat department that way. Once again, they start to actually put labels on there to give us a little bit of clarity of what they're doing with the meat. Now you say, Doc, this must be grass-fed versus organic. Uh, well, we gotta get a little bit more detail because grass-fed and 100% grass-fed, for example, are different, all right? So, now Duran, by nature, let's start there. If all of a sudden you look at basic conventional meat and how it's raised on all those big major farms that way, just by going to grass-fed, you're automatically getting a little bit better. So think about that. So if all you do is take the next step and say, Doc, I usually just buy, you know, regular, the cheapest meat possible. Now I move to grass-fed, which once again will cost you a little bit more. Now, just by its term, grass-fed, most of them, and that's the way it's kind of cool, came from a cow that's exclusively fed grass, hay, or foliage. Okay? Now think of it this way. Now, that means, for example, an animal is put in its normal environment, okay? That's why if you ever look, uh, conventionally processed cows can actually get very large. A grass-fed cow isn't as large. It's one of the reasons why it actually costs a little bit more that way. Now, you say, well, Doc, you also show, for example, that grass-fed doesn't mean there couldn't be some problems with it. Yeah, because once again, grass-fed is possible that pesticides were used on the grass or the hay, all right? See, that's the thing. When they're out in the grass, it doesn't mean, for example, that the farmer isn't putting herbicides and pesticides within the field, so they will eat that. Now, once again, it's still better than a conventional farm that way where they're being fed a lot of processed things and a lot of feed that can be very damaging and they're confined to certain areas. Um, so at least them getting grass, their body can do the best it can to get rid of that junk, but there's still some things in there. So once again, it's a step up from conventional feed, but it doesn't mean it won't have, you know, um, process things, it doesn't mean it won't have pesticides or herbicides with on there, okay? Now, it is also possible that cows were given antibiotics or hormones. See, grass-fed doesn't mean it can't be given that. Now, here's what I'm gonna say. I know personally some very good grass-fed uh, farmers that, once again, would never allow their cows to actually graze on you know, herbicides and pesticides, would never allow their cows to have antibiotics or hormones in there. Okay, but just in general, when you go to a grocery store, if you actually look at grass fed, you gotta get a little more detail uh, of what's in there because otherwise what ends up happening, there could be. Now once again, I know we all know some good farmers that would never do that stuff, okay? And they don't have the major labeling on their food because it can be lumped in with all grass fed farmers. Let me give you an example. I know a very good grass fed farmer that does none of those, okay? It's basically a very extreme pure source. Now when he ships it and sells it to the butcher that way, the butcher could take that grass-fed beef and mix it with other grass-fed beef, 
okay? And actually, guess what? Now ship it to a store that way, and then guess they're going to put on as grass-fed. So you could have some grass-fed beef that was actually perfect, no pesticides, no herbicides, and some grass-fed beef that did have that, once again, and it came together. But it still can be both listed as grass-fed. That's why it's very important to know where your food sources come from that way. Um, another mixed-in term that way is pastured, okay? Uh, because it, it, pasture is actually uh, important because, once again, as a cow goes out into the pasture on a regular basis, it's important because why? It's where it mainly lives its life. Well, it's kind of neat. That's why if you notice, for example, 100% grass-fed, because you'll see, in, even in the same grocery store, the same brand, you can have 100% grass-fed and you can have grass-fed. What's the big difference? Well. You can even take those good grass-fed cows, and when they're shipped to be butchered, what will end up happening is they can feed them grain and other corn and things like that to actually finish them before they actually are butchered. All right, a 100% grass-fed um, cow is fed that, that hay all the way through the process so they end up having grass the whole course of their life. So that's why even uh, grass-fed, towards the end of the cow's life, it's being shipped for processing that way, it can be fed other things. Um, some grass-fed farmers, um, once again, speaking in general, because once again, I know grass-fed farmers that do not do this. Um, in general, uh, a lot of grass-fed farmers, what they'll do is actually to fatten the cow up, so actually they make a little bit more profit. The last couple months of the cow's life before it's shipped off for butchering will actually give that uh, cow, corn, and soy, and other grains to fatten it up, which will make it now obviously more, you know, profitable, which, for example, it still can be listed as grass-fed because the majority of its life was actually put into the pasture that way. So now, don't get me wrong, I would still choose grass-fed over the, over the uh, current conventional. I would still choose then 100% grass-fed over grass-fed. So there's kind of a hierarchy that way, and that's the whole purpose. But let's say you're starting scratch one. Let's say right now, this is the first video you ever watched and said, Docky says start with meats. If all you do is just go away from the conventional meat to grass fed, it's a step in the right direction. See, that's the purpose of everything that I want to do for people. It's everything that our doctors teach is the fact of always getting you to move in a little better direction. Because why? There's less burden on the body and the body can actually do its job a little better when there's less burden. Okay, so if all we can do is move you from the basic conventional meat in over to some grass fed beef, you're good. Your body's going to do better. So start there. So even if you stop the video right now, the next time you shop, just look for some good grass fed beef. And if you want to take another step, move into the what? The 100 percent grass-fed beef, because once again, it's a little bit a step up, a little bit less things that could go wrong through the process. Now, then we move into organic, okay? So organic. Now, there's a lot of controversy over this because once again, it's the USDA and they're always changing things. But just for the standards right now, uh, once again, I do know a bunch of organic farmers. I get to talk to them on a regular basis. I get their insight on it that way. The standards are actually very high right now for organics, okay? It really is. I always find it funny, you know? You, you want to have an organic farm, it's massively regulated. You do do a conventional farm that puts out a very bad product, they're minimally regu regulated that way. It isn't. They don't get as many ex inspections, they don't get as much uh, fines and things like that because an organic farmer doing really good stuff can actually get fined very easy uh, um, through its process. A conventional farm, which can actually, or, or for example, high levels of you know, toxicity and all the bad things that go on, they get, reg they get regulated very minimally compared to organic farmers that way. And it's kind of funny. I come from a farming family, not me, but my wife does that way. You are saying, um, um, actually we have farmers in our family up, up north in our Cribbits area that way, but my wife still and her fa family still owns a farm that way, okay? So it's kind of interesting watching the whole process that way, and most of your, most of your small farms are actually becoming you know, absent today because of big farming, okay? Because they keep on buying up everything, and then they are trying to move product to the high level that way. Well, that's why I think organic, for example, has become so popular. So look at some of the things that actually happens with organic farming. There is a big difference between them, okay? Number one, they're born and raised on a certified organic pastor. Okay, that's very important. Here's a big thing. They never receive anti-antibiotics. So 
Even with grass-fed or 100% grass-fed, there can be antibiotics used in the process that way. All right, with the organic farm, not a joke. If the cow actually has that that way, it's going to be very tough for them to be listed there. Now, there has been some controversy that, that once again, that there has been some or, or, uh, antibiotics used on organic farms that way due to some of the things that go on with the cows. And they say, well, if there's a certain timeline before they're butchered, they can still be considered organic. Well, that's, that's you know, for example, some of the things that the USDA and them farmers have to work out that way because we want to keep our, you know, meat as pure as possible. Okay, they, but here's one thing that's really important. They never receive growth promoting hormones. That's a big one, you know, because once again, people don't realize what that cow ingests or what that cow does relates to their tissues. And if we eat their tissues, we get some of that stuff. They're fed only certified organic grains and grasses. Now this is the big thing. See, once again, you can have an organic beef, but it doesn't mean that it's grass fed. So you could actually take organic corn and soy and other grasses that way and feed them and that's where some of the big controversy come in. Say, so, well, grass-fed is actually better than organic. Um, once again, because if you do feed a cow corn and soy and other grains, it can get very large that way compared to other animals that way, compared to a grass-fed animal. That is true. So if you look at the, the basis of it that way, they can be fed those things, okay? Number three, must have unrestricted outdoor access. Now, they must have unrestricted outdoor access, but it doesn't mean they always have to get outside. See, this is where, you know, once again, it starts to go through it. Now, my personal thing. Now, this is my personal thing. This is my opinion. Remember, I always tell you when I give you opinions compared to facts, okay? Opinion-wise, I still, for example, would actually rather have no pesticides, hormones, and, you know, other things done in antibiotics done to the cows um, and maybe get some grains, okay? Now, that's my personal opinion. Leave it at that because there's some people that say, well, Daco, I'd rather have them out eating, you know, on a pasture that actually, you know, eating corn and soy. I don't disagree with that. I just so understand the devastation, gly glycophosphates, herbicides, pesticides that way, that, you know, um, a co a organic cow eating organic grains is actually less, you know, worrisome to me than actually the herbicides and pesticides because of the massive toxicity those does. Now, some people may have a different opinion. Some people say, Doc, I, I'd rather actually deal with the herbicide pesticide than I would actually a cow eating, you know, corn or soy, organic or not that way. I don't disagree with that. I'm just telling you, remember, uh, my quick tip, my opinion, okay? So I'd rather actually move more towards the organic realm that way. And they're on. Because uh, now I don't want to see the, you know, uh, uh, cow eat corn or soy. That's why if you really think about it, it leads into our next step, okay? Our next step that I actually like even more. I like, for example, grass-fed organic, okay? Let me see again, grass-fed organic. That, to me, is very important, okay? But once again, we're talking about today about where to start. So if all you're doing is eating conventional meat, you go to grass-fed, it's a better step. You go to 100% grass-fed, it's a better step. If you go organic, it's even another step up. Now me, because of my education and what we do and I want to teach, um, this is where I would love to see people go to. But as you go up that ladder, there's also an increased level of cost. Why? Because now if you have a grass-fed cow, which for example, has to be within its pasture and its normal living environment that way. Um, once again, yes, there's a higher quality meat. There's actually better nutrients that way. But also, too, it can't get as fat. It can't because now it's organic. You got to put it into the good grass fed. You can't feed it organic core soy to make it uh, uh, actually larger. So once again, the cow is actually based on its weight. It's not based on its quality. Okay. So as it goes up in actually size, once again, they can actually make more money. When you have an or, or, or a grass-fed organic cow, they don't get fat. They, it's a very lean meat. So therefore, once again, the cost of the cow goes up. So as you actually go more to the, you know, the, the, let's say the purity of the product that way, obviously the more there's gonna be cost involved that way. But once again, when you start from conventional, any change is actually 10 times better than actually going there because of all the major toxic aspects of that meat that way. But once again, for my family and for what I like to choose, I like to get people to go to grass-fed organic, okay? That's why if you look at my choices, how I do it that way, you know, we can go start, once again, start with some grass-fed beef that way, you've already done better.
Second of all, for example, move to 100% grass-fed beef. You know, once again, getting a better quality product. Then, I, then you can move to organic beef. Now, this is where some people between two and three might, might go back and forth. Once again, it depends on your preferences. Do you want to have a chance of herbicides and pesticides, or do you actually want them uh, not to be fed corn and soy? Now, here's what happens. Let me step back and say this. Let's say you have a severe corn or soy allergy. Okay, the reason why I use those two grains, because they're popular grains, even in the organic world, to use for feed, okay? Now, yes, there's other feeds, but corn and soy are used a lot organically within other farms that way to make actually the cows for feed, okay? Now, if you have a high level of a corn or soy allergy, you have to be very careful about eating just organic beef or organic products because once again, the remnants of that corn, the remnants of that soy, actually will be transferred into our tissues and you can react to a person that way. That's why if you have a corn or soy allergy, be careful with just organic. You may be better off going with 100% grass-fed beef because you could react to it even though it's organic. See, a lot of people say, Doc, I'm, I don't have a meat allergy, okay? I'm not allergic to beef, but when I eat organic beef, I actually seem to actually get some digestive problems. And it's not because it's the meat, it's because what the cow was fed. It might, you might be actually getting the proteins from the organic corn and soy into your system, and if you have a soy or corn allergy, you can react to your organic beef quite significantly. Okay, compared to, that's why you may be better off with 100% grass-fed beef, even though there might be a little pesticides on there and stuff like that, at least you're not gonna get the remnants of that corn soy move in, you get more of the remnants of the herbicides and pesticides. See, so that's why two and three, based on who you are as an individual, you might, you know, might be able to actually do better. Now, obviously, for example, you can avoid all that with going with a grass-fed 100% organic beef, but here's what happens. Guess which one is the most expensive? Okay, guess what's one is that more limited supply? Number one, okay, so therefore you're gonna pay sometimes seven to eight dollars a pound for that. But if you look at conventional meat, getting it for two bucks a pound, you know, there's a big difference. See, people always say to me, Doc, why is, uh, you know, the best food so expensive? Uh, wrong question to ask. The real question is to ask is why is the other product so darn cheap? You understand? It's a different way of looking at it that way. You know, it's kind of like, for example, the quality based on what we do. Remember, food is now more based on speed than it ever is on its quality. I want people to become lovers of food. I want people to actually to do it that way. Now, Durang, I totally understand where everybody's coming from. We all have budgets to live on. So that's why, for example, giving this, it gives you the best way to get started, okay? That's why I want to do a whole series on getting started because once again, if all of a sudden you get started in the right direction, next thing you know, two or three years later, you're in a really good direction that way, moving your health in a great direction and seeing good changes and actually keeping that budget under control. But good choices that you can make on the way do a wonderful job of getting us going in that right direction. So I personally like to go into the grass-fed organic beef that way. Now, Daron, when I first started, I actually started just like everybody else. Started moving the grass-fed, started moving the better products that way, started to go up there. Next thing you know, years later, I'm going, okay, because of our, of our lifestyle, what we want to do, here's where I moved to that way. This is what I want you guys to do. Start getting started in the right way that best fits your family needs that way. You know, because once again, if you, it's just you, well, once again, you maybe can afford to go to orga organic grass-fed beef right away. If you have five kids, um, you may have to start with grass-fed for a while because they're going to eat you out of house and home, okay? Now, see, I know a lot of people are, are, are sometimes don't like, you know, this kind of video because they're saying, Doc, just tell us, this is the way to do it, this, this, now, nah, but then once again, you're not giving people good guidance on what directions to go. Do I want everybody to eat organic grass-fed beef? Yes, I do, okay? Uh, but once again, financially, sometimes it's a little bit tough. So therefore, at least give you the best options to move in that direction, and as you actually understand more and see what goes on, you might move in that direction. But if you just go from conventional meat to grass-fed, you're already better. You're already better, and that's what I care about. That's what the Wellness Way cares about, is you're just doing a little bit better, okay? Because as you do a little bit better, so does this do a lot better. Okay, so as you kind of come through, there's kind of a different look at it that way. Uh, once again, give you some little steps to actually make it go in the right direction. Uh, Brandon, do we have any questions on there? Um, actually, one. How yes. Does this relate to choosing which chicken to buy? Is that a whole new quick tip we need to do? Or? No, no, no. Actually, the funny part is this. Um, it's interesting because uh, you, you will see that when it comes to chicken and things, uh, there is no, a chicken or pork, there is no grass fed, obviously, because they don't eat grass, okay? Uh, that's why you're going to see things that are more range-based that way. Now, a pork, for example, is a whole different animal. 
Uh, I think, Brandon, I think based on that question is this. Um, we're going to do just the, a thing on pork because uh, a lot of people ask me, Doc, what do you think of pork? Once again, I have no problem with pork. Okay. Now, it's really funny because the whole Christian market freaks out about pork. We're going to debunk that. Okay. I'm even going to, I'm even going to bring in some scriptural references to that because, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. I mean, it, here's what happens. It still comes down to your sourcing that way. Okay. Um, and I have some, you know, uh, of theories of why the Old Testament actually says what it says that way. Uh, but I'm going to kind of, you know, because people get into classifications that way. And what do you think of pork? I'll tell you right now, I'm probably going home right now. And my daughter is no joke. My daughter, Trinity, was, uh, she wanted to make her, once again, her famous pancakes, as you saw if you follow us on Instagram, her doing stuff. She is just a little baker like crazy. And she loves making her pancakes in the morning. But I guarantee we're going to have some great organic bacon with it. Okay. Actually, it's kind of funny. Um, I'd actually rather eat pork than I ever would beef. Okay. I would. That's just me personally that way. Um, actually, it's kind of cool where I live right across the street. Um, there's an organic farmer that has organic pigs right across the road. Okay, and I get to see those pigs. I can say hi to them every morning when I leave my house because uh, we live out in the country. We have some acres out in the country that way. I'm a country boy, okay? So yeah, so uh, chickens and um, once again, you'll never see grass-fed obviously for there, but once again, they, they should be ranged that way. Uh, I will do a section just on pork alone because there's some misnomers about pork. Now, Durang, um, from a toxicity standpoint, uh, pork can be worse than beef. It really can. So that's why I would say this. Um, your sources of pork have to be a lot better than cows because their availability to actually rid toxins is less. So any other good questions there, Brandon? Um, bison? Bison. Oh, my goodness. Once again, but let's go back to this. Bison, for example, is it, it, the majority of the bison actually is free range. It really is. They're grass fed. That's why they're a leaner meat that way. It's very hard uh, with bison to get them to eat, you know, grains that way. That's why if you notice, you know, I always found this funny. Okay. And this has to do with bison and cows and everything. I always find it funny that we have so many farms in Wisconsin. By nature, what that does, that puts us behind the eight ball. Because at least in Texas, where I, I went down there and spent time on some really awesome grass-fed ranches that way, man, they, they're eating year-round because there's no snow. Do you understand in, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, there's, I mean, even Wisconsin in general, there's so many farms. Do you understand the amount of uh, um, storage of grains and stuff like that that has to happen just to be able to feed these animals? Now, yes, people say, well, Doc, you know, it's better than shipping it from Texas. Yes, I do agree that. But you got to remember, the, the quality of meat, my personal thing, the quality of meat is going to be tougher to maintain in Wisconsin than it is in a southern state because we don't have to store, they don't have to store uh, most of the food if you want to do it right through the winter. So it makes it more difficult for farmers when they're actually, you know, um, um, here in Wisconsin. So that's why you see a lot of bison farmers down there. And once again, bisons by nature, they're, they're very picky animals in how they eat. So that's why they're more, you know, grass fed that way. So that's why they're a leaner thing. So I'm a very big fan of bison that way. Here, let me, let me clear something up. I'm a fan of almost any food that's done right. You know what I'm saying? I'm a really big fan of foods that, for example, that have its purity that way. Now, once again, obviously to get the convenience of it, it's easier to do it yourself, but not everybody's going to be a farmer. See, it was interesting. Grocery stores have really exploded over the last 50 years. Why? Because we've produced less of our own food as a family. You know, you go back even, you know, 50 years ago, everybody had a garden even within the city. You know what I'm saying? It's just that things have changed, so we've depended more on, you know, convenience of grocery stores and things like that. That's why you see a lot of people going directly to farmers that way. Now, Durang, you know, I love our grocery stores around here. You know, uh, Woodman's does a great job. You know, they, uh, they actually try to bring in, I will tell you, talk to your grocery stores. Really talk to them. I will tell you right now, the managers at Woodman's have been great. They've been awesome. You know what I mean by that? It's just this is a local grocery store. Go talk to your local grocery stores, even their conventional chains. They're, they're a business. They want to please their customer. And if you have a need and if they find out they can sell it, do that. See, it's a good conversation. It's business with customer that way. You're the customer. Go talk to them that way. It's kind of nice. That's one thing about most businesses. They'll actually try to accommodate you if there's a good need for it. And if you want to see um, more pure products actually become more available, start buying them. Start buying less of the, the, the stuff that's not as good. And they actually, they won't hold them on their shelves because they won't sell. You know, I always tell people, people want to see the cost of organics and some of the better stuff go down, make that the norm. Because then there'll be competition and the cost drop.
with no competition, they can keep it at a high cost that way. So that's some of the things we can do as consumers. I, I, that's why I kind of laugh. You know, um, you know, people say, well, you got to get people to change. Well, actually, all you got to get them to do is go in the right direction, and then everything around will change. Because if we actually, if someone today, if everybody watches says, from this day forward, I'm not going to buy conventional, I'm going to go just at least to grass-fed, okay? A little bit more expensive, but I'll go to grass-fed. Eventually, grocery stores won't have conventional meats. You know why? Because no one's going to buy them. So therefore now grass fed would become more competitive and then they're gonna compete of making more pure sources and keeping the cost down. See, so consumers drive it guys, they really do. So that's why I tell people, uh, put your money where your mouth is. You wanna see things change, just get away with other products. You can start to do that. So let's just start a little bit of a, of a revolution there to actually move people in the right direction. So yes, Brandon, any more questions on there? I mean, you could probably go through every single meat, but like- Oh wait, lamb, uh, actually it's kind of cool. It, it, it's interesting, lamb's actually a very good meat too. Once again, very lean, but look at what they do. You know what I'm saying? Um, and once again, the more pure that you get it, actually the, the leaner the, the, all the animals are that way. So yes, um, but I do want to do pork. I do want to do pork that way, you know what I'm saying? Um, what's your take on venison? Okay, here we go. Um, obviously people know I love deer hunting and stuff like that, I love killing big bucks, okay? Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of funny, Brandon, when I travel, uh, and, and I get to know people and they say, doc, you know, they don't realize I'm, I'm a country boy. I like being a country. I don't like being in a city, okay? I like what, looking out my back door and seeing turkeys and deer and bear and stuff like that. Um, I like nature. Um, now people understand that because of what I do for a living. But it's quite interesting that when people go, doc, you're a hunter? And I'm like, um, yes, I grew up in a small town. I grew up on 240 acres, okay? Yes, I'm not a city boy just because I do what I do for a living, okay? But it is kind of funny this, is when you look at venison, once again, venison actually is a catch-22. It is a leaner meat. You will get, you will get uh, uh, um, deer to actually roam all over. They're always grass-fed, but once again, um, a lot of uh, farmers, once again, they'll eat their corn, they'll eat their fields that way, they'll eat their herbicides and pesticides. So um, is uh, venison better than conventional meat? By far, by far it is that way. Can they eat some herbicides and pesticides? Yes, they can because once again, unless it's a deer farm where they're fenced in and you can control the grass, they're gonna eat corn and any kind of foliage they can get their, you know, their mouths on and it could have some herbicides, pesticides on. So am I a fan of venison? Sure I am, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's kind of cool. I would tell you there's a, um, there's a acquaintance of mine, he's a butcher uh, up where I grew up, up in uh, Crivets, uh, Pelkins, okay? Um, learned something, I learned something from him. It was kind of cool because when we shot our venison, I don't like, you know, all of the additives to the, to, you know, preserve it. So I don't want to put sulfates and nitrates and stuff like that um, on our meat that way. Well, uh, Pelkins taught me something. They said, listen, doc, do you understand that you can preserve some of your meat with organic pork? which I didn't know. And so when I had my deer made into sausages that way, uh, they did a one for a job, but they mixed organic pork with it and it actually preserves it a little bit better that way. Um, it was kind of cool. So I learned something from Pelkins that way. Thank you, Dennis. Um, he's a great guy. I went to high school with him. It's kind of cool, but I learned something. See, that's the cool. Always be willing to learn things that way. And because once again, I, he, as he butchered my deer, I just didn't want, you know, any nitrates and stuff on there. So he told, taught me a way to do it that way. And once again, so there's, there's great ways of preserving things too. So, you know, it's kind of funny. I guess, we, Brandon, we could do almost a quick tip every day of stuff you learned over the last, you know, 20 years of practice. Thing. Brad's like, I just learned something right there. Yeah. So, yeah, so I like venison, but once again, you also have to balance out the aspect of, you know, pesticides, and herbicides stuff. So, yes, but great questions, okay? Um, yes, oh, Mary, Mary asked a question. Um, what about the stuff they use to cure pork? Um, um, gotta remember, this is my personal thing. I even go back to this on the smoking aspect that way. I have a hard time curing and smoking things just because of some of the toxicity levels that way. That's just, you know, I, I'm gonna try to do it as pure as possible that way. So I'm not a big fan of smoking or curing uh, just because it, it, you gotta be careful, you know, some of the toxicity levels of it that way. So once again, uh, listen, Susan Walls had deer processed at Pelkins. Yes, I know Dennis quite well. 
Superman. Tell him I said hi if you do see him. He's a great person. So anyways, thank you so much always for watching. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn, the Hormone Whisperer. Me and Brandon come for you live. We're going to go enjoy our beautiful day. It's supposed to be like, what, high 80s today here in Green Bay, which is ecstatic and stuff. So we're going to be outside getting the sun, getting our vitamin D. So once again, thank you for always watching. I appreciate you guys. Please do me a favor. Um, if you like our information, always like and share. Also, too, you're on, you're on our Facebook page. We have our YouTube page. This, these things live on our YouTube channel. Just go to Dr. Patrick Flynn. And once again, it's kind of funny. Um, you know, people always try to create accounts that mimic ours. So make sure you see a picture of this, me, and, and, uh, and actually like our YouTube page. And you can see these on a regular basis. So you guys have a beautiful Saturday morning. Uh, and actually, you know, take, start taking those little steps in the right direction. Have a great day.